Imagine it's a Friday evening. You're out with friends at the fancy new restaurant in town, and everyone's dressed to the nines. You glance over the menu, and it all sounds delicious. You're all sitting around the table, enjoying each other's company. It's a great night out. Now, imagine you can never do that again. You've just been diagnosed with an allergy to gluten. Your options are severely limited. Going out to eat is now a health risk. With just a minor exposure, you'll end up spending the next 48 hours suffering in the bathroom, battling harsh stomach cramps and intestinal pains, and spend the next week to maybe month dealing with symptoms like anemia, blood sugar roller coasters, unhealthy weight loss, and feeling so lethargic you have to sleep 18 hours a day. I was diagnosed with celiac disease as I was beginning graduate school, and a single sip of beer had enough gluten to ruin a night out. For those of you who don't know, celiac disease is an autoimmune disorder caused by an allergy to the gluten protein found in wheat, barley, and rye. These are common ingredients for things such as bread, pasta, and beer. But would you expect to find gluten in sandwich meat, non-dairy creamer, and even some chewing gum? It's not always obvious what contains gluten. When someone with the allergy eats gluten, their body reacts with an immune response that damages the villi of the small intestine. These villi facilitate nutrient absorption into the body. But when these villi are damaged, the body cannot absorb nutrients from the food we eat, causing a litany of health issues. According to the Celiac Disease Foundation, about 1% of people worldwide suffer from celiac disease. And at least that many more have a level of gluten sensitivity. Now, let's bring things home to the greater Tulsa area, a small city with roughly a million people. Theoretically, it's about 10,000 celiac sufferers in the area with many more people who have a gluten sensitivity. So statistically, we should have about 15 to 20,000 people in the Tulsa area alone who can't have gluten. Also, studies show that the average age of diagnosis is 45. There is no cure for it, only a devoted gluten-free diet. People who've been leading normal lives for decades are now making the difficult transition to a gluten-free diet giving up things they've enjoyed for years. Polls also show that about two-thirds of U.S. adults drink alcohol, and of those, just over 40% choose beer as their drink of choice. This means we should have four to 5,000 beer drinkers in the Tulsa area left without a beer to drink. Now, let's talk about beer for a second. Beer is a passion of mine, but after being diagnosed, it was totally off limits. I could not take one sip. The only thing I could do was, well, <laughs> Smell it, a limiting experience. <laughs> I go out with close friends, and being aware of my diagnosis, it wasn't a big deal to them when I just reach across the table, grab their glass of beer, give it a good sniff, and hand it back. They knew I just wanted to experience it the only way I could. But it was an entirely different story when I go out with people who didn't know me as well. <laughs> After a while, I just had to accept the fact that I was going to be the awkward guy at the bar who asks, <clears throat> so uh, can I smell your beer? Yeah, let me tell you, that got very frustrating very quickly. I decided if I were actually going to experience beer again, I'd have to start making it myself. I took to reading any and every book on the subject. The only problem was, all the information about brewing was about beer that contained gluten. There was little to no information out there about brewing gluten-free. Few people had done it, and fewer had written about it. So, utilizing my background in chemistry, engineering, and design of experiment, I started methodically experimenting with millet, buckwheat, rice, and quinoa, classic gluten-free substitutes for wheat and barley. And in time, I developed recipes I was excited to share. I had people taste the beer at our local home brew club, and when the most experienced beer nerds said it was a really good beer, not even noticing it was gluten-free, I realized I had something. It dawned on me that I had created something previously unavailable to a large community of people. And it was then that I began toying with the idea of building a brewery. And as I was developing that idea, I began to realize it's more than just about beer. It's really about inclusivity. To give you an example of the extremes celiacs have to go to to be a part of the dinner table, I get invited to a friend's for dinner and have to say, do you mind doing a deep clean of your kitchen and not cooking with any gluten-containing ingredients? Can I bring my own toaster? Oh, and could you be sure to save all the ingredient labels for me to double check? <laughs> not exactly an easy dinner guest. I mean, I could just dig through their garbage for the food wrappers to read the ingredient labels, which I have done before. The worry about cross-contamination and accidental exposure pushed me to dig through many a trash can over the years. 
there are real social issues for those with food allergies, which tend to be overlooked by those without. There is an excessive level of exclusion from the group when something as simple as breadcrumbs left in the butter dish are a barrier. Not being able to comfortably participate in a very basic social activity, such as eating a meal together, which is why I have created a dedicated gluten-free brew pub. Now, more and more people are aware and attempting to accommodate those with food allergies, but cross-contamination is a difficult issue. Having dedicated kitchen space is costly and difficult to maintain. Sometimes, as accommodating as places try to be, it's not enough to keep people from getting sick. It's not the establishment's fault, but sometimes adding to existing spaces isn't adequate for those with severe allergies. I've had customers come to me and say, this is the first time I've been out to dinner with my husband in 12 years. This is the first time the whole family's gone out to dinner together since the diagnosis. And once, there was a young guy in the tap room. He had a flight of beers in front of him, and he was getting his picture taken, but he was crying. I sat down with him and asked if everything was okay, and he said, yes, it's, it's just, this is the first draft beer I've had ever. We found good intentions and accommodations are not enough, and for a community to come together, new spaces must be built. We wanted to create a place where people could enjoy a beer and a bite together without having to dig through the garbage or sniff someone else's beer. Inclusivity matters, and our beer is brewed for everyone. Thank you. <laughs>